on guys it is evan here from evan sports corner and i'm back with another video here on the channel today i'm be talking about the texas rangers signing three new players two big big signings for the rangers as a rangers fan it's been a crazy 48 hours we've signed Corey seager we've signed marcus simeon we got John Gray. We've been making a lot of big moves this offseason, so I'm going to talk about all of them in this video. Remember to leave a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you are new so you'll not miss more sports content like this, and let's hop right into the video. So as a Texas Rangers fan, I haven't experienced this as a fan. We haven't been a good team for five years now. It's been five years since the last winning season, and the Rangers have always been kind of a cheap team. They don't really go out and sign these types of free agents. Yes, they signed A-Rod way back then, but ever since then, the Rangers have kind of been a cheap team. They don't really go out and spend like this. So it's been very surprising, but very nice to see. The Rangers have gone out and they've gone all out this offseason to boost their team. The farm system for the Rangers has gotten a lot better, and the Rangers are getting better. For the first time, it seems like in a long time, the Rangers are really starting to trend upwards, and they have been going out and spending crazy. They've spent a lot of money this offseason, and it's been a crazy 48 hours. We got the news yesterday that the Rangers signed Marcus Simeon to a seven-year, $175 million contract. Simeon is going towards the end of the prime of his career. He's 31 years old. And he's a very good player. He's a shortstop slash second baseman, and Simeon is one of the best in the game. He hit 45 home runs last season. He's one of the best power hitters in baseball. He provides that power in the middle of the infield. He can play any position in the middle of the infield, although with the recent acquisition of Corey Seager, he'll be playing second base, which is where he did very well last season and won a gold glove at that position last season. And Marcus Simeon, in two of the last three years, has been a great baseball player. 2020 wasn't a great year for him, but 2020 was an odd year. You know, I'm going to put more stock in the 2019 and 2021 seasons where Simeon was an absolute stud. And he should be great for the Texas Rangers. You know, we can put him at that top of the order, and he's going to be an absolute stud. Marcus Simeon was good in Oakland, and he had an amazing season last year in Toronto. He bet on himself, signed a one-year contract with the Blue Jays, and got paid big this offseason by the Rangers and I think Marcus Simeon is a fantastic addition to our team a power hitting second baseman that the Rangers desperately need the second signing they made yesterday was John Gray now if you look at John Gray's stats on the surface it doesn't look too great for John Gray he's a 30 year old pitcher his ERA is not great but we all have to remember that he played for the Rockies at Coors Field. Coors Field is a hitter park. It's not a pitcher-friendly ballpark. And he played for the Rockies, so his win-loss record and that kind of stuff doesn't help. John Gray has the potential to be a really solid number three option in the rotation. He's not going to be an ace for the Rangers. And you're hoping for the Rangers that some of their prospects coming up are going to be aces. And you're hoping Dane Dunning can evolve into an ace. Jack Leiter has the potential to be an ace at some point. So... I think that the Rangers don't really consider John Gray being a ace type player, but I think that they do have him as a solid third or fourth caliber starter in their rotation. That's a really solid guy to have, getting more depth in that rotation. So John Gray is a very underrated signing, but also a pretty good signing. And I feel like the Rangers got to steal with John Gray. And the third and final signing that the Rangers went out and made was the biggest signing of them all, Corey Seager, 10 years, $325 million. Shocked when I heard that because the Rangers are not a team that typically spends that type of money, but wow, $325 million to a shortstop. You knew it was going to be a loaded shortstop class. Simeon was considered a shortstop. Correa, Baez, Seager, the list goes on. There are so many good shortstops in this class, and you were hoping that the Rangers were going to go out and get one of them. Maybe we were to Trevor Story, Corey Seager, and guys like that. And the Rangers went out and got themselves Corey Seager, 27 years old, very accomplished at that age. Corey Seager has been phenomenal for the Dodgers. He has been a World Series MVP. Seager has also been a two-time All-Star, two-time Silver Slugger winner. And he's also been a very consistent 300 hitter. He's been hitting around the 300 average mark, which is something the Rangers desperately need. They need a guy like Seager who's just going to be a consistent bat in the lineup. The power isn't too crazy. He hasn't hit 20-plus home runs in a while. He's kind of like a 15-home run guy 
per season. But Seager's a terrific player. He's a good shortstop. He provides very consistent play. And I think he is certainly worth the $325 million price tag. It's a lot for Corey Seager. But I think that the Rangers went out and spent big on Corey Seager. And that is a fantastic move by the Rangers. I'm very excited to see Corey Seager wearing a Rangers uniform next season. And this is just, again, this is not typical for a Rangers fan like me. I'm not used to this. You Dodgers fans, you Yankees fans, you, you guys are used to it. But as a Rangers fan, we don't spend like this very often. This is very rare. And I am enjoying this feeling right now of the Rangers actually trending upward. To put into perspective how much the Rangers are spending compared to how little they've spent in recent years, Buster only tweeted out that the Rangers have spent more on two players combined which is Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager, than they have with their total payroll in the last four seasons. The Rangers have spent $500 million combined on Seager and Simeon, and in the last four years, their total payroll for their players has been $410 million. So the Rangers have been doing a lot this offseason, and they're competing with their division rivals. The Astros are still there. The Angels have their great players. The Mariners have been super aggressive in free agency. They got... Robbie Ray today which was a big signing for them so the Rangers have competition but they have been one of the most active teams in free agency so far and I'm very excited for the future of this team because it feels like for the first time in a long time the Rangers actually are doing something good which is nice and now where do you go from here you know could still potentially pick up another player you might see go after Carlos Rodon Clayton Kershaw we'll see what the Rangers do the rest of free agency but I really like where the Rangers are heading and now, let's see how they do next season. I don't think this is going to be a World Series team year one. They need more pitching depth. They need to call the prospects up and get them some development. But I think here in a couple years, I think the Rangers certainly have the potential to make a World Series run. They have, if they continue to make these types of moves, if they continue to develop their farm system and their prospects come up and develop, well, this is a Rangers team that actually has a chance at a World Series here in a few years. I'm not saying this year, I'm probably not even saying next year, but here in a few years, the Rangers do have the potential to make the World Series. And as a Rangers fan, this is the best I've felt about the team's future in a very, very long time. That's gonna wrap it up for the video, so I hope you guys enjoy. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new so you not miss more sports content like this. And I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.